such bad recoil. From distance, just try like one or two tap on them. So what they're currently doing is oh. they're doing what's called death match. They're like, you, you're giving them just like five, six, five, I think it's like ten minutes, and then it's See, I don't even have to go back by 80. I can just do the warm up here, go back for my game at 7, and then. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, why, why are you watching esports? And I think my, my dad took me to my first event, um, and then it really kind of brought him into my world. And then from there, sort of the rest of the family started to want to know like, why I'm spending so much time playing. And then. Yeah, I think skeptical at first, but now they understand how big the industry is growing and the, the pace it's growing at. They're now really like all for it because yeah, it's a great industry to start to get into. Yeah. <laughs> If we've done our placement year, if we've done our masters, we're going to be right slap bang in the centre of it possibly being at its peak. So I think I, I have zero regrets. So there's always going to be risks, but I have zero regrets in picking a course and choosing to pay out that amount of money for something like this because it can only go up at this point. Um, they decide what rules they think are going to make a good game. Um, so for the, the People aren't aware of the industry that goes behind esports. Uh, you know, it's, it's very much seen as maybe the music industry was in the 80s, where you know people thought it was just people playing in their garage. Uh, but actually, there's a booming economy and industry behind it. You know, with with websites such as Twitch being bought by a million dollars from Amazon, uh, and, and you know acquisitions such as that. So I think it's learning about that kind of detail behind it. The same way that if you were to go and study, you know, to be a director of football, you're not playing football, but you're learning the business behind it. You know, how transfers work, how you run a stadium, and all, all those kind of operational things. Also, from, from that uh, you know point, is that um, is it, you know how has the point of change happened? You know, what about that? Yeah, so uh, something like that, um, and there was a lot of car and track combinations. So. It's changed a lot more recently as well, like some people are very humble, but those games like Counter-Strike League and Dota, they've got a massive attitude now, you know, like they know they're worth a lot of money. I think when I made the decision and moved into teaching, uh, I was met with quite a lot of surprise from even my colleagues in esports who kind of went, oh, I didn't realise that was now a degree option. Um, and then as that settled in in the office and people started thinking about it, they kind of thought, oh, that's actually would be really nice if people could come out and know how this works or how, how to understand this or interpret that. There is absolutely no gameplay as part of the course and when the students come in for open days, usually with their parents, and the parents sometimes are a bit, mm, okay I'm not quite sure if this is going to be a great career move and then by the end of the first open day session with us they've realised that actually we're giving them skills which can be transferred to any industry. It's not just about esports, so about all of the skills that we give them to do with communication and problem solving. But also 
the huge amount of opportunities in esports then become really apparent to the parents and they realise that their son or daughter is not going to be playing games on the course but they're actually going to be putting on events or organising teams or sorting out tech for events. You know, a huge range of, of different career options open to them and then they see how much the industry is worth and then they think, okay, th this might be a really good career choice for you. This isn't a new thing. Um, in South Korea, this has been going for years and years and years, and it's grown um, o over the years to become what they consider to be their national sport. It's a little bit like saying, do you think football is just like a flash in the pan? Is it going to go away? Is it going to be interesting afterwards?